Well, let me show you this picture here. This is a picture of kids in class. In a classroom, this is what SMART is. It's the kids who know all the right answers. And in school, that's considered SMART. Yet, that's not the way human beings learn. The real way human beings learn, look at this little baby. Baby stands up and falls down. Stands up and falls down. Yet in school, they punish you for falling down. And they wonder why kids don't want to learn anymore. You keep punishing them every time they fall down, call them stupid. Well, in the real world, if you're going to be an entrepreneur on this side here, you've got to be willing to stand up and fall down. But the truth is, in all of these quadrants, to be successful, Failure means learning from your mistakes and getting smarter. Unfortunately, in the school system, failure, making mistakes, means you're stupid. So if you look here at the cone of learning, a very important tool here, you'll see here the worst way to learn is at the bottom of the cone, you know, lecture and reading. That's what school is at. But at the top of the cone is doing the real thing, but just below that is the simulation. It's called practice. The truth is, the most successful people practice. You know, they practice to make mistakes, learn better. They can practice, make more mistakes, get better. A golfer practices to become a better golfer. People like Tiger Woods, Rory McIlroy, Sergio Garcia, they probably hit a million balls. They practice constantly. In theater, it's called rehearsal. You rehearse, 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 rehearse. But one of the reasons most people are not successful is because they went to school here and you're actually, on this side, you're punished for making mistakes. On this side, you have to make mistakes. So here's my dear friend, and a friend for years, one of the greatest athletes in the history of the NFL, the National Football League, Rod Smith. Rod was a great employee, captain of his team, the Denver Broncos, because he practices a lot. He carries that over here, too. The reason he's a very rich man and not a poor, broke, old pro athlete is because he practices the same thing here. He practices, 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 because through practice, you make your mistakes and you get better. So that's how mistakes lead to success. Well, I know most of you guys don't understand American football, um, but that's the number one sport in our country. And when you're growing up in poverty the way I did, you need anything to get out. Because I was always told, go to school, you know, go to school, then go to college, then go to college, then get a job. And so I need to get to college, but we couldn't afford it. So the way to get to college in America is through a scholarship in either sports or school. So I wanted to get a scholarship to get out of the projects to go to college. I, I grew up in Texarkana, Arkansas, real small town, about 55,000 people. My, my mom was on welfare, food stamps. We have government assistance. They don't have that in some other countries. Uh, my dad was gone. My dad left. Uh, hell, I don't remember when he left. Doesn't matter. Um, and so my goal was to go to college so I could take care of my mom. That was the goal. And so I worked hard in school. I had three plus GPA to get a scholarship for college, but I played football very well. And I got a college scholarship to Missouri and went to Missouri, got hurt a couple of times, but I want to go to the NFL because I can really take care of my mom and myself if I can go there. I, I had all the numbers. I played well. I was all American, but I didn't get drafted. I didn't, no team picked me. So they have this draft and it's like 200 and some people and they, and they said, well, you're not one of the best 200. That's basically the way of looking at it. And so when I got a chance to play with Denver, I was like Seth. I said, now I'm here and you'll see that I fit because now I'm pissed off. Well, I was pissed off the whole time. <laughs> so it didn't really matter. When you have nothing to lose, I have nothing to lose. I have everything to gain. And so for me, and I had, I've had reporters tell me that you play with a chip on your shoulder. I said, well, it was more like a tree on my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> what a chip. <laughs> chip is too small. <laughs> and so, you know, just to make a long story short, guys, um, I just won an opportunity. I just won an opportunity to prove that my skills were just as good or better than the other people I was going against. I'm in my locker one day, and, and the guys from Florida State, 
uh, no, no, Notre Dame, Nebraska, because I went to Missouri Southern State. <laughs> That's the college I went to. And it was a very small school. And, and they would all like, where is that? I said, it's in Missouri. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're athletes, they're not that smart, right? So I said, it's in Missouri. <laughs> Well, I went to so-and-so, and they got their jackets on and all this stuff. And I said, we'll see out there. See, because when, when you're out there, we're even. I don't care where you went to school out there. And so once we went out there, I earned their respect by beating them up. Yeah. Literally. I mean, every day, it was, it was day after day after day. And, and that's one, um, and, I, and I ran into Robert's principles while I was playing. I mean, you could you could find me in the training room reading Rich Dad. You could find me on the plane reading Cashflow Quadrant. You find me on the plane reading Rich Dad's Guide to Investing. They always like, dude, what are you reading? You always reading these purple and black books <laughs> all the time. Since that, since my buddy gave me that one book one time, the rest of my career they would find me in the back of the plane on every trip reading one of Rich Dad's books. Every trip. And I had a few guys, of course, ask about it, and, and because I knew there was more, there was more I didn't know about my own money. I have three three degrees in business, taught me nothing. No, seriously, they gave me some basics of what I don't want to do. It's just it's true, because none of the people who taught me knew what they taught me. They never did what they taught me. I started stalking Roddy, Robert and Kim. <laughs> Every time they would go somewhere and I would run into Ken, right? And, um, and I just, I was so in awe of their information. We were just talking about it at the table. The reason most people don't say I don't know is because they're worried about judgment. They're worried about the label that somebody's going to give you. If you say you don't know, they call you stupid. So we're afraid of that label so we give them more power than we give ourselves. And if your being is correct, you don't care what they label you. You know who you are. And so, <laughs> so, um, so, so, the, so the thing was, uh, as we were just discussing it here, is with teachers, they get a curriculum, and if they don't teach that curriculum, they're stupid, or they get fired. And they don't teach what they know because most of them don't do what they teach. And that's one thing I love about the Rich Dad Advisors. And of course, all you guys' books, I read them all. I got, I got all you guys' books as well. Because they do, he made it so much easier for me to understand. Thank you, sir. The core of learning here, what, what impressed me about you is that you have doing the real thing. So his teachers do the real thing. Your coaches played football, right? Yeah, most of them. Yeah, some of them, I know some don't, but yeah. <clears throat> the real ones do. But the thing about simulation here is one of the most important words in education is called practice. Yes. Because it's in practice where you make your mistakes. So what happens is you have a pseudo quasi teachers who tell you don't make mistakes. Yet, if you look at doing the real thing, right below it is the simulation, a game. In music, it's called a rehearsal. Football is called practice. You know, if you're going to be a guitar player, you practice for hours, okay? And that's what school misses, the practice. You've got to make mistakes. And the person that makes the most mistakes in life and learns from the mistakes, wins. How did you become captain of the Broncos? Was that your good looks or? <laughs> <laughs> it was practice. So oh, tell yeah. him the story of how hard you practice. He, he, you know, the, the difference was he practiced more than anybody else on the team, right? No, I, um, it's, in, in the off season, you know, football season is 17 weeks. If you go to playoffs when the Super Bowl ends in February. So you have from the first week of February Football season doesn't start back until July. So what about all that time in between? You can be very idle. Well, I would take two weeks off. One week I would give to my family. One week I would give to me. I went back to work. 
practicing on my own, not with the team. You, you're, you're by yourself. You're, you're solo. You're, you're studying. You're, uh, you know, you're alone. So I would work on the things that I didn't do well the previous year. And I would work on the things I did well the previous year, work on it all. And, and it's, it's funny that you said what you said because um, then they'll have team workouts where you can start coming and, and for me, this is my life. It's one a job. If I do this right, it'll set me up for the rest of my life. So nothing came between that. And so in the off season, they would track how many meeting, how many times you came. And for me, for 14 years, I never missed one. Not one time. I went to, they were voluntary. You didn't have to come. I went to 605 consecutive off season trainings. Even when I was making $5 million, even when I was making $7 million, I didn't care. I, I went to that training every single day to get better every day because there was always something I was going to learn every day. And so there was a lot of guys who made more money. There was a lot of guys who were more talented, but they weren't going to outwork me. They weren't going to, they weren't, I wasn't going to give them the satisfaction of saying, if you would have showed up a couple more times, will you still be playing? I wanted to end the game on my terms. I'm the captain of the team like the last seven years. And um, because, see, you have to do stuff that separates you from everybody else. And I was going to show up. That was the first thing. Most guys wouldn't even show up because they were talented. Talent is not enough. I promise you. In nothing, I've learned talent is not enough. You have to practice, practice, and when, you, when you're when you tired, practice some more, and then when you think you figured it out, practice again, because every simulation is different. Uh, we were talking about cash flow. We were talking about cash flow uh, yesterday and how we love playing cash flow. I play cash flow all the time, and we were talking about it, and he says he go and get him two games of cash flow because every deal is different. Just seeing the numbers and seeing the deals every single time. My, my kids, we play cash flow. And I'll never forget, now my daughter beat me one time. And she cussed me out. She, stupid ass rich guy, you're a peasant. She just dogged me out. Because when I play them, I slaughter them if I can't. I, I, I show no mercy whatsoever. I want to be out of the rat race and everybody's still in there and I talk about them the whole time I'm walking around the house and I walk by, how are you peasants doing? How's that cash? How's that job thing going for you? And, I, and, and my daughter won and she, she just dogged me out. My son is a lot better. He's beat me several times. I don't let him know that. I don't remember that. <laughs> but we play it. But guys, you know what? Now my son is doing it. My son just moved to Columbia. He started a business online, made 60 grand in a month. Him and his buddy. I said, you, you're broken, America. It's your fault. <laughs> he, he literally started an online business with a buddy. They, they made 60 grand in a month, and he cleared $23,000. He said, Dad, I'm moving to Columbia. I'm like, really? Great. Get out of my house. Right? So, I, but, but you know what? It's because he sees me doing it. So the best way to teach is to do. And it's hard. Well, to me, it's impossible to teach what you don't do. And so I have to get in the, in the fight. I have to get out there and practice. I have to put my money up in some regards. I come to seminars. I, I listen to books. I listen to tapes. I, I buy the videos. And just to simulate, like he's saying, I simulate what would I do if I was in that situation. And so, guys, then you know what happened? Those situations came. And then I did what I practiced. And then the result turned out the way I wanted. And then I do it again. That's why I'm an entrepreneur. It's the best class you ever have. And it always changes. And so I, I lean on his guidance. I don't talk to him all the time. But from afar, I get the essence. I understand who Kim Kiyosaki is. I understand who Robert Kiyosaki is. And I study them. Even when they're not looking, I'm studying them. And I, I study these guys especially the stuff I don't know. I study it. And so it's not about just remembering. You got to become it, you know? So I, I owe a lot of that to the, the one book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad is my book. So thank you.
about this for you because it says here, in the field of battle, as in all things, you will perform as you practice. So practice hard. With practice, you build the road to accomplish your goals. Excellence lives in attention to detail. Give your all, all the time. Don't save anything for the walk home. A, the better a knight prepares, the less willing he will be to surrender. That's our job. Thank you, my friend. Thank you.